This is when she discovers a two and a half page long handwritten ransom note. Many people have theorized that one of those three individuals was actually responsible for the murder of Jean Benet Ramsey. Can I just say that it's supposed to snow here on Christmas in Georgia on Christmas? I don't know if that's a Christmas miracle or like a nightmare waiting to happen. Hey guys, welcome back, or if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney, and I'm here to give you the creeps. If you're into true horror, I highly suggest that you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you're notified every single time that I upload, because I get on here every single week and tell you guys another true and scary story. So happy holidays, guys. We made it all the way here to the end of the year, as well as to the holiday season, and I just wanted to take a second to wish you guys a happy holiday season with your friends, family, and loved ones. And with that in mind, guys, today's Unresolved Mystery video is actually having to do with a holiday-themed murder mystery crime, which might be a bummer now that I think about it, but we're just gonna roll with it. As it just so happens, a couple of weeks ago, one of my really good friends here on YouTube actually commented on one of my videos asking me to cover the Jean Benet Ramsey case. And I got really excited because it was actually already on my content calendar for this week. So for obvious reasons, I'm kind of excited to just go ahead and jump on into this video, even though the story is a bit gruesome. But before we do so, I do need to give a bit of a disclaimer, just because the subject matter in this case is terrible, if I'm being honest. For those of you who don't know, the Jean Benet Ramsey case is an unresolved murder mystery wherein the victim is a child, and therefore I'm going to be talking about a child's murder. That in mind, if that is something that you feel like you might be sensitive to, maybe take a pass on this video and go ahead up here to this playlist where you can find another video from me that you might enjoy more. I promise you, you will find something that you will enjoy. It's just that this video might not be for you. Sorry. Love you anyways. But for the rest of you guys who are interested in watching this video in its entirety, let's go ahead and hop into it. So this story starts on December 25th in 1996, Christmas Day. It's gonna be great, right? Well, maybe not. We are in the city of Boulder, Colorado, where six-year-old Jean Benet Ramsey lives with her parents, John and Patsy Ramsey, as well as her older brother, Burke Ramsey. Aside from Burke Ramsey, Jean Benet actually has three other older half-siblings who are the grown children of John Ramsey from a previous marriage. However, these three individuals do not live in the house in Boulder with the rest of the Ramsey family. Now, it's also really important to note here with the rest of the family dynamic that John Ramsey was known to be a pretty successful businessman in the area, and the family itself was known to be fairly wealthy and well off. On top of that, Patsy Ramsey was actually a former beauty queen who held the title for Miss West Virginia in 1977, and when she had Jean Benet, she knew that she wanted Jean Benet to fall in her footsteps and also become a pageant queen. For that reason, Jean Benet competed in various different pageants during her young life, and she actually held the title for a few different titles there in her state, including none other than Little Miss Colorado. So she was pretty good at the pageant thing, okay? Now with Jean Benet's natural showmanship in mind, John Ramsey did later state that this was just something that John Benet did for fun and as a way that she really just connected with her mother. However, he does remember his daughter as being very much a tomboy and a little bit different than the rest of the girls there that did pageants. So that's just something to note about her personality. So back to the timeline at hand, guys. Like every other child on Christmas morning, Jean Benet and Burke Ramsey got up very early on Christmas morning 1996 and went downstairs to open their Christmas presents. On this Christmas in particular, Jean Benet actually received a bicycle, which was a gift that she was very excited about. And if I understood correctly, she actually spent the majority of that Christmas day outside riding this bike. That is, before the family packed up into the family car and drove over to the White family home for a Christmas party. Now, after spending a few hours at this family friend's home for this Christmas party, the family got back in their car, and on the way home, Jean Benet Ramsey actually fell asleep in the back seat. For that reason, when they arrived back at their house, John Ramsey picked up Jean Benet and took her back upstairs where she was in her bed, fast asleep by 9 p.m. It all seemed right as rain. Unfortunately, it does not stay that way, so let's get into it. So let's fast forward to the following morning, when at about 5.30 a.m., Patsy Ramsey gets up and goes down the back stairs into the kitchen to make a cup of coffee. Hear, hear, girl. This is when she discovers a two and a half page long handwritten ransom note lying on the back spiral staircase leading into the kitchen. This ransom note stated that Jean Benet had been kidnapped and that they wanted $118,000 for her safe return, a number that was actually the exact amount of John Ramsey's Christmas bonus that year. Now, I'm not making any accusation or pointing the finger at anyone whatsoever, but can we not at least agree that that is shady as fuck? 
Like, can we? That said, guys, investigators later theorized that this ransom letter was probably penned by someone who was close to the family, or maybe even somebody who worked with John Ramsey professionally and therefore would have known the exact number that he would have received as a Christmas bonus. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but... But just as a quick aside, guys, I will say that to me, this theory seems pretty baseless just because I do have some experience in corporate HR and I know that there would be no way that a bunch of people would have known his exact bonus amount for that year. It's just not feasible, in my opinion. Like, that theory doesn't make any sense, but that is what they concluded, at least in the initial portion of the investigation. On top of that, guys, the ransom note also stated that the alleged kidnapper would call in between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. that morning to, I guess, negotiate the safe return of Jean Benet Ramsey. However, they never ended up calling, which to me also seems pretty shady because why would you go through the trouble of writing this ransom note if you weren't actually going to call to collect the ransom? And lastly, guys, this ransom note actually demanded that the Ramseys not contact authorities under any circumstances. So, what does Patsy Ramsey do? She immediately contacts authorities. And by 5.55 that morning, Officer Rick French arrives at the scene. Now, upon his arrival, Officer French did an initial search of the home. And in doing that, he found that there was no indication that there was forced entry into the residence at all. There was even snow that had fallen recently outside, and he couldn't find any fresh footprints going into or out of the Ramsey's home during the timeline that this would have occurred. However, what I found the most frustrating about this portion of the case was the fact that Officer French went down to the basement during his initial search of the home. And in doing that, ended up passing up the spare room in the basement, which was where the body of Jean Benet Ramsey was later found. This was apparently because he was looking specifically for an exit route for the alleged kidnapper, and that room unfortunately just didn't have an exit out of the home, and therefore he decided to not search it. Now, of course, I'm not placing the blame on Officer French at all. There were a lot of investigative errors throughout the entirety of this case. However, I will say if Patsy Ramsey did grant him access, to the basement and to that spare room. Initially, when he showed up, they would have found her much, much sooner, and the outcome of this case may have been a lot different. Now, that's obviously just one girl's opinion, but it is something to note here, okay? Cool. Now, that in mind, guys, less than eight hours from this point, investigators direct John Ramsey to do a top to bottom search of the home to see if he can point out anything that is misplaced or just overall out of the ordinary in the home itself. In doing that, he goes into each individual room until he gets down to the spare utility room in the basement. This is when he finds the body of his daughter, Jean Benet Ramsey, and from there, all hell kind of breaks loose. Now, upon his discovery, John Ramsey actually found that Jean Benet's mouth had been covered with duct tape and that there was a cord still around her neck. This cord was also looped around a four and a half inch wooden stick that was said to be the end of a paintbrush that came out of Patsy Ramsey's art set. I know, that's really shady, if you ask me. Later on in the investigation, the autopsy showed that Jean Benet was actually bludgeoned to death, whereas the county coroner stated that her cause of death was asphyxiation due to strangulation. And you would not believe how long it took me to say the word asphyxiation. And it is believed that the paintbrush that was looped around the other end of the cord was used to tighten the cord around Jean Benet's neck just moments before her untimely death, which is so terrifying and messed up on so many levels that I just can't even... I can't. I hate it. Now, another thing that came up while they were examining Jean Benet's body was the fact that they found DNA on her long johns as well as her underwear that didn't belong to her. However, that DNA has never been linked to any one individual. All we know is that it has to do with a dude that obviously wasn't her because she was a six-year-old girl and this was the DNA of what they believe to be a grown man. So there's that. So now that we understand the basics of this case, I wanna go ahead and talk about the ransom note in specifics because there's some pretty shady stuff going on with that whole situation, okay? Now, the first thing that I really wanted to point out about this ransom note was the fact that it was written on a notepad that belonged to none other than Patsy Ramsey. You see what I mean by shady, right? And on top of that, the pages that this note was written on came from the middle of the notebook itself. Now, apparently there had been seven pages that were torn out from the middle of this notebook, leaving behind pages that Patsy Ramsey had written on on either side of those missing pages. And this indicated to investigators that there must have been two drafts of what was already a pretty lengthy document as far as ransom notes go. Moreover, the other three-ish pages that were missing from this notepad were never recovered, 
which indicated to investigators that this ransom note must have been written from inside of the home prior to the murder taking place. All while, John, Patsy, and Burke Ramsey were still inside of the home asleep. That is... <laughs> that is really shady. I'm sorry. Now, upon analyzing this note, handwriting experts realized that it was incredibly likely that this note was written by a woman. And oddly enough, there were a lot of different errors within the note as far as spelling goes. For example, there was one instance where the word possession was written incorrectly, and then a few lines later, the word attache was written with no problem at all. Now, this fact struck investigators as kind of weird, seeing how they considered possession to be a fairly easy word to spell, whereas the word attache, complete with an accent over the E being correct, was kind of weird, you know? Like, that would have been a lot more difficult to spell than possession. So, like, what the hell? Now, for that reason, amongst many others, investigators as well as just people following this case feel like this ransom note may have been a hoax, but more on that a little while later. Now, another thing that I want to point out before we move on to the suspects within this case is the fact that this investigation was kind of shot to shit from the start. Now, initially, at the start of this investigation, investigators had no reason to believe that this was anything other than a kidnapping, and therefore, the crime scene and the investigation were treated as a kidnapping and not a homicide. You can see where this might present an issue, right? For example, at the start of this investigation and prior to finding Jean Benet's body, there were a lot of people coming in and out of the home, either helping with the investigation or consoling the family. Then, once they found Jean Benet's body, investigators realized that a lot of the evidence within the home was contaminated and therefore rendered useless, which is so frustrating to say the least. Now, with that in mind, guys, let's go ahead and discuss the suspects within this case, specifically that of Jean Benet's immediate family. Now, at the start of this investigation, the Ramseys faced a lot of scrutiny in the eyes of investigators as well as the public because John, Patsy, and Burke Ramsey were the only people that were known to be within the home at the time that the murder took place. Now that, coupled with the fact that there were no signs of forced entry going into the home on the night that the murder took place, many people have theorized that one of those three individuals was actually responsible for the murder of Jean Benet Ramsey. Now keep in mind, these theories have never been proven, and if I understood correctly from my research, all three of these individuals, John, Patsy, and Burke Ramsey, have been exonerated as suspects within this case. That being said, I did just want to go ahead and touch on those theories while we're here before closing out this video. So the first theory that I wanted to touch on was the one that actually claimed Patsy Ramsey was responsible for her daughter's death when she accidentally killed her on the night of December 25th, 1996. Now, according to multiple different sources, Jean Benet actually had the habit of wetting the bed from time to time, and this was a fact that kind of upset Patsy Ramsey a great deal. Now, if this theory was true, Jean Benet would have woken up at some point that evening and realized that she had wet the bed, and from there, she went to go wake up her mother, who took her to the bathroom to get her cleaned up. Now, at some point during this process, Patsy Ramsey would have somehow caused Jean Benet to hit her head. And from there, I guess out of fear, would have used the cord to stage a strangulation before taking her notepad and then writing a ransom note that turned out to be a hoax. Or so this theory alleges. Now, another theory actually points the blame at none other than nine-year-old Burke Ramsey. Now, again, according to a few different sources, I found that Burke Ramsey at the time had a bit of a temper and was known to kind of take things out on his little sister, which if I'm being 100% honest, isn't totally out of the ordinary. Like, children fight all of the time, right? That in mind, guys, according to this theory specifically, at some point on the evening of December 25th, 1996, Burke Ramsey and Jean Benet Ramsey got into some sort of a fight or altercation, which led, again, to Jean Benet somehow hitting her head. This would have been in the witness of Patsy Ramsey, who from there ended up faking a strangulation and ransom note to protect her son. Now, I'm not saying that either of these scenarios are true in the slightest, but I will say that that is where my research ended up taking me and that a lot of sources were saying that this might have been what happened. However, I did just want to take a moment to go ahead and point out the holes that are within these theories, okay? Now, the first and probably most obvious issue with both of these scenarios is the fact that Jean Benet's cause of death was in fact asphyxiation due to strangulation. Now that in mind, in both of these scenarios, the strangulation was actually staged after the murder would have taken place, and therefore her cause of death would have been the bludgeoning that the autopsy found, not the actual cause of death 
that the coroner stated. Now that in mind, another issue that investigators had with both of these theories was the fact that the ransom note did not match the handwriting of either Patsy or John Ramsey. Now that in mind, guys, I did just want to take a second to point out that Patsy Ramsey's handwriting sample came back as inconclusive when they compared it with the ransom note. Now guys, in case you're unfamiliar with how handwriting analysis typically goes, stating that her comparison came back as inconclusive is basically just the expert's way of saying that they have no way of knowing for sure if Patsy Ramsey actually wrote the ransom note. Now with that in mind, you could probably say that that is at least a little bit shady, but at the same time, it wasn't enough for them to be able to incriminate Patsy Ramsey within this case. Then on top of that fact, investigators took a look at John Ramsey's handwriting samples and realized that there was no way in hell that he could have written this ransom note. The handwriting was just way too different for that to be a possibility. So overall, at least in the eyes of the investigators, all signs pointed to an intruder and murder within the home itself, even though they had no way of proving that there was any sign of forced entry at all. All right, guys, there you have it. That is just a basic overview of the JonBenet Ramsey case, as well as a few theories that could possibly shed a little bit more light onto this unresolved mystery. Overall, I feel like this case is really heartbreaking, and hopefully at some point in the future, we'll be able to get some more answers on what actually happened to JonBenet back on December 25th of 1996, because I feel like she, as well as everyone who's ever followed this case, deserves that closure. It's just so heartbreaking that we don't have any answers, and I just really am hoping that at some point we will finally get them. That being said, guys, as always, there are tons and tons of theories out there that could possibly explain what happened to this little girl back in December of 1996, and I didn't have a chance to cover every single one of them, like that would literally take all freaking day. So as always, make sure you leave a comment down below letting me know what you think actually happened to JonBenet Ramsey, because I would love to start a discussion with you guys down below about it, as I always do. But with that being said, I think that's pretty much it for today's video. If you made it all the way here to the end and liked what you saw, make sure you give me a big thumbs up because it really helps out my channel. Also, if you're feeling generous this holiday season, make sure you share this video on different social media platforms because that really is the best way that you can help support my channel at this point. Unless, of course, you want to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I get on here every single week and tell you guys another true and scary story. So if that is something you're interested in seeing more of, I highly suggest that you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you're notified every single time that I upload. But with that being said, have a good holiday and I will see you next week. Bye.